What's cracking you too? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. We are officially into the playoffs, week 15. Some of y'all probably started last week. Some of y'all are starting this week, so it's gotta be a big episode. I gotta bring the noise as we're going over the key injuries. We're going over some guys I hate, some guys I love. My league recap, see what's going on in my playoffs. Did I make it? Did I miss it? That's all in store for today. I got a couple other things. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video next week because it's championship week. I know a lot of you are like, whoa, we need you the most there, but there's probably a lot, 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 lot less people that will be engaging with the video. So it won't help as many people. So I'd rather almost just have you guys ask me any questions you want throughout next week, like sit start questions. So you can hit me on YouTube, Twitter, email, Facebook, whatever you wanna do. So I don't know if it makes sense for me to do all my blog posts and my YouTube stuff, because that's a lot of work for me, obviously. There's a lot of hours I put in, and I don't know if there's a lot of people that actually need it next week, because a lot of people probably won't be in their championship games, especially if you listen to me this year. So, oh, the other thing is too, I was thinking about, I wanna get more merch, some more merchandise into the store, into the BDGE website. So like, next year, I wanna see if you guys would be interested. If I started making uh, shirts, you know, for like specific teams, like if you guys are fan say you're like a Saints fan and I had a shirt that said like Kamara season right like our Alvin Kamara season SZN of course because that's how I spell season something like that something like uh you know niche to my channel like you wouldn't see other shirts that say like season on them right so kind of want to get that so we can get on top of things that are popular in the fantasy football world going on like obviously Alvin Kamara is a good example because no one really knows about him unless you're into fantasy football so I think like a Kamara season shirt would be cool for people that are Saints fans but let me know what you think about those or if you have any ideas for products you want me to put put into the store so you guys can buy them because I can pretty much mock up whatever I want and put them out there. So let me know. That's that. No more sales pitch. We're going to get right into the video. So let's play that funky music. All right, before we start, I just wanna make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, Nick underscore BDGE. Go follow me on Twitter. Go subscribe to the newsletter, which will email out my wide receiver cornerback matchup going up tomorrow morning. Go to the homepage, bdgeat.com. Scroll down a little bit, put your info in right on the home screen, and bam, you're gonna get that email. We're gonna eat. We out here eating, as always. But let's get into some injuries. We have not exactly an injury, but he's coming back from injury, the biggest quarterback that probably ever was in Aaron Rodgers. Most talented quarterback, in my opinion, that's ever played the game of football. He is expected back. You know, it was a beautiful little IG post he put up about him in the, in the hospital bed and all his recovery and thank you and all that nonsense. So he's gonna be back, right? They're seven and six. They're looking to make a playoff run. If they win out, they will make the playoffs, I believe. So they're gonna be at Carolina this week. I know a lot of people are gonna be hesitant to start Rodgers in their lineup, and I say do not be hesitant. Right, this Carolina team on paper, it, it looks like a tough matchup because they're on the road, Rogers coming back from this injury, but apparently he's looked great in practice. I have no doubts that he's gonna be able to throw the ball like he's always throwing the ball, like Aaron Rodgers throws the goddamn ball. Um, Carolina's allowed the 10th fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, but over their last three games, they've allowed on average 305 total yards per game two opposing quarterbacks along with six touchdowns. So quarterbacks have kind of been ripping them up as of late. With Aaron Rodgers back, this is obviously a huge boost to Jordy Nelson, right? Who, or the, the artist formerly known as Jordy Nelson because he completely fell off the face of the earth as soon as Aaron Rodgers kind of got out of the way. Now, what's this mean? I think we have too big of a sample size of, of Jordy Nelson and Aaron Rodgers playing together that you can't um, you can't hesitate to put him right back in your lineup as like a high-end wide receiver too. So we'll look at some splits. We see Jordy with and without Aaron Rodgers this year. It's actually absurd. But with him back, we can expect somewhat num uh, similar numbers to you know what he was doing with uh, Rodgers in the beginning of the year. We look at Devonta Adams' splits. Not much different. He's been pretty consistent throughout the year. He's been very good there for Green Bay with or without Rodgers. So both of them are going to be right back in the wide receiver two discussion with um, a ton of upside in in, uh, in this Green Bay game. So Rodgers, get him in. Jordy, get him in. Devonta Adams, get him in. Next, we have Carson Wentz, man, tore the ACL. Now, I did a poll on Twitter the other day. I was asking, like, what's the biggest blow to a fan base as a football fan? Was it this Wentz ACL injury? Was it Deshaun Watson's ACL injury, or was it 28 to three? Obviously 28 to three, got like 47% of the votes in one. Fuck y'all, first of all. 
Second, make sure you are following me on Twitter, man. I'll, I'll list it down here. But this is a blowing one for the Eagles, man. I, I feel for the, the Eagles fans because that kind of blows them out of the water in terms of championship pedigree. They have a great team, and Nick Foles is going to be the quarterback, right? Question is, what kind of Nick Foles are we getting here, right? Are we going to get the 29 or 27 to 2 touchdown and interception guy that we saw a few years back? Like, we've seen him have success in the league, but was that was that fluky? It looked like it. Ever since then, I mean, it's looked fluky. He came into the game last week, uh, went 6 for 11, 42 yards. When Wentz went down, he didn't look particularly good at all. Now, uh, Foles is actually in a really good spot. If you're desperate for quarterbacks or streaming, um, you know, you're in a pickle here. They have good matchups to end the year. They first are um, they first play against the Giants, who are just disgusting against quarterbacks. They've allowed the single most fantasy points to quarterbacks on the year, second most passing yards allowed per game, tied for the most touchdowns allowed in the league, passing touchdowns. They are bottom four in both 20 plus yard plays allowed, 40 plus yard plays allowed, and they will probably be without Landon Collins this week, who is PFF's number eight overall graded safety on the season so that defense is completely depleted right they have nothing really to play for right now Foles, you know has a lot to prove he has something to go off of and um he's got a good supporting cast around him they have they're a top 12 offensive line pass blocking offensive line per football outsiders you know he's definitely definitely on the streaming radar if you're desperate in week 15 i looked at the target splits and the 11 passes that he threw last game sorry i think i got a piece of apple in my tooth um, so he threw 11 passes, and this is how they broke up. It was three to Alshon Jeffrey, three to Aguilar, two to Torrey Smith, and then one for Trey Burton, Ajayi Blunt each. So it's a stupid, stupid small sample size, so I'm not going to like give you analysis based off 11 passes. But you see that eight of the 11 targets went to out, outside or went to wide receivers, Aguilar, Jeffrey, and Torrey Smith. So we'll have to see if, uh, if that has any effect on the receiving work for the backfield and or, you know, Zach Ertz, who's coming back. Um, Tyrod Taylor coming back from the knee injury. He is, they already said he's basically the starter when he's healthy. Gets a really good matchup in week 15 at home versus Miami. I went into this in my, in my waiver wire sheet with Tyrod Taylor, why I think he's a good streamer this week. So if you want to read about that, I'll link it right here. It's in the blog section of my website. Uh, Josh McCallum broke the hand, man. I shed a tear. I shed a tear. This guy's a warrior. The ultimate warrior, man. I'll tell you what. He's out for the year. Broken hand. Uh, needs surgery on it. Bryce Petty will take over as quarterback. You know, your initial thoughts are like, oh shit, I can't play anyone in the Jets offense right now because of the injury. I say, hold up. Wait a minute. Pull the reins back a little bit. You know, I'm getting pretty good at the Millie Rock, I'll tell you that. I remember, I was like, oh, everyone's fucked. Bryce Petty. Then something clicked in my head. I said, wait, 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 wait. I remember some research I did this offseason when I was making my top sleeper uh, wide receiver video. Robbie Anderson was one of my top sleepers going into the year this year. And I remember seeing splits between Robbie Anderson with Bryce Petty at quarterback and without him. And I'll put him up on the screen. As you can see, he played very well with Bryce Petty as the starter last year. We have a four game sample size. He was getting nearly 75 to 80 receiving yards a game. He was scoring every other game. So Robbie Anderson, I say, would, is definitely still in play. Those two have a chemistry. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it going down the stretch with them. Now, they play against New Orleans. It's a pretty tough pass matchup if if um, Anderson sees a lot of Marshawn Lattimore. But I, I think, uh, I think An I'd be comfortable with Anderson rolling him out as a wide receiver three this, this week, even with Bryce Petty at quarterback. Then we got Tom Savage. Dude, this was like, speaking of Savage, Barcel had the most Savage fucking... Uh, IG con uh, they put up the picture of Tom Savage or the video of Tom Savage doing his little concussion thing and uh, They're like I bet the NFL would have allowed uh, JFK to get back into the uh, <laughs> into the parade So he's in the protocol TJ Yates will be the quarterback if Tom Savage can't play in week 15 Doesn't really change anything for me DeAndre Hopkins is gonna be a wide receiver one regardless of who's at quarterback I don't really want to play anybody else except for I guess Lamar Miller um but I'm not playing Will Fuller. I'm not playing Steven Anderson, despite all the hype last week and all that stuff. So uh, let's move to running backs. Adrian Peterson, you know, it's still shit. Like he's just missing all these games with the neck. There's no return timetable. We have no idea when he's going to be back. So it looks like he's kind of far off from coming back if he even does. If he misses another game, we got your boy K. Willie. Kerwin Williams um, will take over basically as a lead back. 
He had 21 touches for 88 yards in week 14. That gives him 37 touches over the last two weeks. That's like legit RB2, RB1 type workload. They're not really getting a lot of scoring opportunities. This offensive line is depleted. Their, their offensive play overall is depleted. So uh, if Peterson's out, I think Kerwin Williams is like a decent low-end RB2, probably more so a flex play just based on volume, right? Now going against the Redskins this week, the Redskins just gave up 130 plus total yards and a score to uh, to Melvin Gordon and Eckler on the Eckler is it? I don't even know how to pronounce it Eckler on the Chargers and uh, two weeks and then a week prior to that they gave up 150 yards and two scores to the Cowboys running back so they are susceptible to giving up a lot of fantasy points on the ground. Kerwin Williams is getting the majority of the work on the ground, therefore, like I said, I think he's a decent. RB2 flex play based on volume and matchup. That's, of course, if Adrian Peterson sits. Joe Mixican, Joe, Joe Mixican, I was going to say concussion. Joe Mixcussion, Joe Mixcussion, still in the concussion protocol. So the bigger story here is obviously Gio Bernard. Now, Gio Bernard, last game, uh, quietly put together a really good game, 130 total yards, uh, 11 rushes for 62, and then caught six of his eight targets for 68 yards. Super tough matchup on the road in Minnesota this week. Uh, but if Mixon is gone, as far as I'm concerned, Geo is a nut, is still like on the RB high end RB two, if not RB one radar. He's going to get a ton of passing work. He's going to get all the early down carries. He'll probably get the goal line work if they get there. Like I said, it's a bad matchup, but I, I want you in my lineup again there because that's he'll probably have a similar game to that where he gets you know eight targets and and rushes and and uh, catches a lot of balls. So he's going to probably eclipse the 100 yard mark. I'd say. Um, if Mixon is back, then I would be okay with Mixon in my lineup. I'm not putting Geo back in my lineup, of course, but Mixon would be a guy that I could uh, I could throw in my lineup even in a tough matchup. I think he's gonna come right back in. You know, concussion is not one of those things that like it's not gonna hamper him in the game if he's cleared to go. So Mixon's in the lineup. I want him on my team as probably like a low end RB two. Uh, another running back dealing with a neck injury. We got Amir Abdullah practicing in full. Uh, they got a home game against Chicago. It's not really an enticing matchup for any of these lines running backs just because of the way they're being used and, and the, just the lack of production there. Now, the already has been really, really good without Amir Abdullah in the lineup. But if Abdullah comes back, which he should be back, Theoretics volume is obviously going to drop off. I mean, to be honest, I don't hate Amir Abdullah as like a, as a desperate flex play. You could do worse, right? They played Chicago, I think like three or four weeks ago. He had 12 um, half point fantasy points. Um, they're six point favorites in this game. It should be a good game script for Abdullah. I mean, he's going to come back in and claim that early down work right away. So it's not, it's not like you have any danger of Theo Riddick being like the first, the early down back here because he's fucking terrible at running the ball. So Amir Abdullah back, I really don't think he's the worst flex play. So if you're desperate, cool. Alvin Kamara, concussion. Uh, yeah, so he took that shot. That probably cost a lot of people some some fantasy playoff spots. That sucks if that was you. I apologize. Condolences. You loyal. You smart. If you stay with me, though. He should be cleared for Week 15. They're playing against the Jets. If he's cleared, I still want Ingram, and I still want Kamara in my lineups, both as RB1s. End of discussion. Amari Cooper. Uh, re-aggravated that ankle that he entered the game with. He entered the game with the ankle issue. Re-aggravated it in the game in week 14. Left, didn't return. They play the Cowboys in week 15. I'm going to say Cooper's probably out for this game. That makes Crabtree a top 10 option at wide receiver again. Derek Carr sucks, to be honest. He's fucking awful. He's terrible. He's trash. He's tra like tra trash emoji. I wish I could just fucking... I wish I could like, put my hand up and an emoji would pop up. I'd be like, trash, trash. Or I get like the middle. All right, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Um, but uh, he's probably the only option in this passing game that I want to touch. Crabtree, um, ton of volume you should get. Dallas is definitely a pass D to exploit. Robert Woods expected to return in Week 15 against this beat up Seattle Seahawks defense. Uh, he missed the last three games. This Seattle defense has given up the seventh most fantasy points to wide receivers on the year. And uh, a lot of that was with the roster at full strength. They've been very bad against wide receivers as of late with all the injuries that have happened to them, you know, between Cam Chancellor, KJ Wright, Richard Sherman, and now Bobby Wagner. So I'm honestly okay with starting any of the three, any and all of the three Rams receivers this week, Cooper Cup, Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods. Um, it should be a shootout in Seattle. I think both of these teams can take advantage of the other team's defenses. 
Seattle's offense is playing good enough to overcome the uh, LA defense. So I think they, you know, that offense is just rolling. Russell Wilson's on fire right now. So I think it's just going to be a ton of points uh, all around. And, you know, what I'm saying is, like, I think they could support three wide receivers there. You look back at last week, the Jaguars wide receivers, we had uh, D.D. Westbrook, 581 in a touchdown. Keenan Cole, 399 in a touchdown. Marquis Lee, 5 for 65. So I think, you know, the fact they can support three fantasy wide receivers, I think Woods and Cup are probably both low-end wide receiver twos with upside, and Watkins is is a little less valuable to me. So he'd be the 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 one I'd least want to start out of those three wide receivers, but I think any of them I'd be fine with in my lineup. And we have Alan Hearns not practicing again, basically just leaves it open for D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Lee to dominate. Uh, D.D. Westbrook has basically become the de facto wide receiver one there in Jacksonville. Surprisingly, man. He has uh, 27 targets to Marquise Lee's 17. So 10 more targets over the last three games. I mean, both guys have shaped up to have a really, really solid PPR floor of like basically double digit points. So it's a tremendous matchup versus Houston at home. Boros has actually been really, really, really good at home this year. So, you know, I like both guys as wide receiver twos, especially in PPR leagues. They have a great floor. So Zach Ertz concussion. Missed last week, obviously, we saw Trey Burton go off, but as long as Ertz is healthy, he is expected to completely practice in full. I think he's cleared from the concussion protocol already. Um, yeah, he's out of the protocol. He gets a game against the Giants next week. Like I said before, Landon Collins is probably going to be out. He was seen in a walking boot. So the Giants have much... Um, no, what was I going to say? No, the, well, as of late, the Giants have been much better against the tight ends, but they were awful against him in the beginning of the year. And this defense is just depleted. Without Collins, I think that Ertz is like, uh, uh, of course, he's a surefire. You can't sit him as a tight end one, but I think he has a very good game this week. So uh, we'll move on to some defensive player injuries. I, like I just touched on, Landon Collins was seen in a walking boot after week 14. He is PFF's number eight overall graded safety. He hasn't played as good as last season, but he's still definitely one of the lone bright spots on this defense. Take him out, and I don't know what they really have left to give. So it's a big boost for Foles, a big boost for Ertz, a big boost all around for that team. Bobby Wagner, Seahawks linebacker. This is a huge hit to an already defeated defense. Suffered a hamstring injury, left the game. Um, he was dealing with this injury for a few weeks up until this game as well, and he re-aggravated it. So the Jaguars team took advantage. They scored in their next on their next two plays as soon as Bobby Wagner left the game. It just shows that you know he kind of takes control of that defense, and they need him there to communicate effectively. Um, we don't have a clear status on his injury for week 15, but I'm pretty sure he's going to miss some time at least. Bobby Wagner was Pro Football Focus's number one overall graded linebacker on the year. So he was a legit all pro, all world motherfudger out there. Um, he was number three graded in rush defense, number one in coverage, and number six in pass rush. It's insane. There's no weak points. He's a top five player in every aspect of being a linebacker. So... This defense is already without their linebacker, K.J. Wright. Um, and it's just a big boost for Goff. It's a big boost for their running game with Gurley. Uh, this Rams offense is going to be... Uh, they're going to put some points up if Wagner's out of the game. Lastly, we have Gerald McCoy, the Bucks D lineman. Injured his bicep. The initial fear was that he tore that thing up because he's done that before and he said he knew the feeling. Apparently, he wants to play through it, man. These fucking NFL guys are fucking out of their minds. Like, how are you going to tear your... Tearing your bicep sounds like possibly the worst thing to ever go through. Like, when I hear they tear their triceps and shit, like, I don't know. Dude, I can't even imagine the pain. But this guy wants to play already. He's ready to suit up. He's ready to go. Um, Roto World was saying, I was reading an article, he said he essentially admitted he was playing with one arm last week. So, if he does play, which I would probably consider a 50-50 at this point... Um, you're not getting like Gerald McCoy, the all pro Gerald McCoy. You're going to get a very, very under 100% healthy Gerald McCoy here. Yeah. So McCoy's PFF, McCoy was PFF's number five graded D lineman on the year and probably one of the only bright spots on this, this front seven of this, uh, of this Bucks defense. So it's a big drop off. They play the Falcons this week. Devonta and Kevin Coleman should both eight guys. I love guys. I hate. And of course, if you want the wide receiver cornerback matchup sheet, go to my website, sign up for the newsletter. It's right on the homepage. Everything will be in the description. Go do that. Guys, I love Jared Goff. I've already kind of covered this like 65 times already in this video. We're only 20 minutes in. I don't know how that really happens, but basically all the reasons I listed above, right? He'll have all his wide receivers back at full strength with Robert Woods back in the game. Seattle um, defense is, is just not what it was in the beginning of the year, not what it was last year. 
They gave up 380 total yards and a score to Wentz two weeks ago, 270 and two tutties to Bortles last week. So they are not getting it done against the quarterback at the moment. Um, and surprisingly, Seattle is struggling on defense at home, which is usually a strong point for them. Now, over their last four home games, they've given up on average 326 total yards to the opposing quarterback. Four games on average, 326 total yards, rushing, passing, all that, and they've given up seven passing scores. So if Wagner is out, look for Jared Goff to go bonkers, bonkers, bonkers like yonkers. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah, guys, I love. I already talked about Aaron Rodgers. I, it's not so much I love him. It's, it's more so telling you not to be hesitant to put him in your lineup. Wide receivers, I'll talk about in the column tomorrow. Christian McCaffrey, my boy. I went on record last week in my video. Go watch the tape. Go watch the damn game film. I said Christian McCaffrey is going to end up with 60 total yards, zero touchdowns in week 14. I put it on my mama. I put that on my mama. Go watch the film. I'm serious. His final stats, 53 total yards, zero touchdown. Let's fucking go. Let's go. That's that's just good for the brand. McCaffrey's good for the brand. But I'm here to tell you, this is a good week to play McCaffrey. Gorgeous matchup. They're at home against Green Bay. Green Bay's been killed by running backs as of late, especially through the air, especially pass-catching running backs. Now, on the season, they're allowing the seventh most fantasy points to the running back position, the second most receptions per game. They're allowing 6.2 receptions a game to opposing running backs. The sixth most running back receiving yards, about 50 yards a game. Um, over their last four games, they're giving up on average 8.25 catches and 67 receiving yards to opponent running backs, which would be worse in the NFL if that was the season-long pace. So they're getting killed right now. With Rodgers back, it's possible that this turns into a shootout and Christian McCaffrey is even more involved. So I think he's in a great spot to give you that 15-plus spot, in, uh, especially in PPR League. So uh, Tevin Coleman... I just, I, I, he's a guy that I'm, I don't necessarily love. Like, I'm not starting him over any studs, but he's a guy that I wouldn't hesitate to get away from just because he had a bad game last week. They're going against the Bucks. They should be heavy favorites. It should be really good game script for them. And having Gerald McCoy either out or very limited basically means they have a terrible rush defense. So if Coleman can see his, his normal, like, 12 to 15 carries, I think he'll turn that into about 70 to 80 total yards and possibly a score. So I like, I like Coleman a little bit. I also like Rex Burkhead. He's funny. He's been on this list for the last like four weeks consecutively. It's actually crazy. Not crazy. He's, he's the goat. He's Rex Goathead, basically. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says Rex Goathead. I actually might. You know what? I'm going to start using the emojis. That's. What, I'm going to just make a line of t-shirts. One that has a trash can emoji. One that has the goat emoji. But I'm going to use like all words. Let's say like Rex Goathead. Like Rex emoji goat head. Yo, we fucking, we out here. Next year, we're going to fucking ball. This brand, we're taking off, big dog. Big dog nation, we out here. Um, anyways, all this guy does is score. They're going to play at Pittsburgh this week in week 15. Huge matchup in a football sense, right? This is playoff implications written all over it. Ooh, I got to leave soon. I got to catch a train in like 40 minutes. Zam. Um, so what was I saying? So the over-under is at 54. It's the by far the highest total of any game this week. Burkhead's being heavily involved in the passing game, and the goal line. He just he can't stop scoring. Uh, now with Ryan Shazier out, who is PFF's seventh overall graded pass coverage linebacker, Burkhead should see a ton of easy coverage, right? There's no way any of these linebackers are covering him with Shazier out. You know, we saw the Ravens last week run rampant on the Steelers. The running backs rushed for 152 yards and three scores, but more importantly, they combined for eight receptions and 107 receiving yards. So I think there's a good bet that Burke, Burke Goat, Goat Burke, Goat, you could use his fucking name so well with the Goat, like you could throw it anywhere in there. That Burkhead and Deion Lewis combined for similar numbers, especially in the passing game. So I love both, I love both of them. I would prefer Burkhead to Lewis if you're in that situation, but Burkhead's a great star for week 15. Tight end, Kyle motherfudging Rudolph. Uh, Rudolph's been on fire as of late, scoring four times in his past three games. He has 11 catches and 140 yards in that span. Gets a good matchup against Cincy. They're super banged up on defense after that fucking Royal Rumble they had with the uh, Steelers the other night. Or last week or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, they were without Pac-Man Jones, Drake Patrick, uh, Burfick, Sean Williams starting safety last week. They don't really have any good coverage players to begin with. 
um, in, in their secondary and guys who would cover tight ends. Perfect. Perfect hasn't graded out well per PFF. He's like a bot. I don't know. He's like number like 30 per linebacking um, per coverage linebackers or whatever. But I think like when you watch him play, he's actually very good in coverage. So Perfect is was out last week with a concussion. It's very possible he misses this game as well. If he does, that's a big, big, big boost for Rudolph. Um, without him, without Perfect last week, they let up. Six catches, 76 yards, and a touchdown to Adam Sheehan and Deion Sims, the combination of the Chicago tight ends. And Kyle Rudolph is really the only tight end they use in Minnesota, so those those could be similar to his numbers by himself. Uh, and I look back, I'm like, they haven't, the since he hasn't really played literally any good tight ends this year. They're all like secondary, below average dudes. They played uh, Delaney Walker in week 10. He went six for 63. Jack Doyle went 12 for 121 in a score in week eight. But besides that, it's really like there's no bot, no other tight ends that have challenged them. So I think Rudolph, if perfect sits, Rudolph uh, can give them some serious problems. Guys, I hate this week. Starting off at the quarterback position, we have Alex Smith. Did I finish this? Yeah, I did. Epic. Um, going against the Chargers. That's simply it, man. Their LA pass defense has been absolutely incredible as of late. They haven't let up, they've let up just one single 300 yard passing game this season. Uh, they haven't allowed a quarterback to pass for multiple touchdowns since week five. And they've had two guys not even throw a passing touchdown since then. They're allowing just 176 passing yards over their last four games. They've only scored, they've only let up three passing touchdowns in those four games, but have picked the ball off four times. And Smith has been far from consistent. So this is just not a good, not a good thing for Smith, right? The, the, the cons definitely outweigh the pros here. I expect, this is what I expect. I expect Casey Howard to shadow Tyreek Hill. And I expect the, and him to be able to kind of take hey, uh, Hill out of the game. Thus, the entire rest of the Chargers defense can basically focus in on Kelsey. And I think that's what we saw a lot of in uh, week three because because the Chiefs and the Chargers already played this year. Smith threw for 155 yards in that game. Kelsey was held to one catch for one yard. Now, Tyree Kill did get uh, did beat the defense for like a 30-yard score, but besides that, um, if they can keep Tyree Kill in check and, and don't let up a big play, which I don't expect Casey Hayward to do, they shouldn't have a problem shutting down this passing offense as a whole. So I'm definitely sitting Smith this week if I can. Frank Gore going against Denver. Now, Denver's been a lot looser against the run as of late, although they did shut down the Jets completely last week. Um, they were amazing in the beginning of the year, fell off a little bit, and they're picking things back up a little bit. They're supposed to be getting back Damata Pico this week. He's expected to return. He's one of their best uh, D linemen for stopping the run. They've allowed the eighth fewest fantasy points to running backs on the year. But the story here is the fact that fucking Frank Gore, 30, 34 years old, he could be most of your fathers. Maybe not most of yours, but definitely some of your fathers if there was... If they were slang, if they were slapping cheeks at, at a young age, they could be some of your fathers. I bet some of y'all are young. Anyways, Frank Gore, 34, had 36 carries last week. 36. I don't know if that's a career high or not, but it's definitely the most carries he's had in about four or five years, if not his career, because that's as far as my stats went back for the time being. Um, 36 carries on Sunday. They play on Thursday night, which means he has three days of rest coming off 36 carries, 34 years old. <sighs> I look back at Gore's numbers over the last three seasons, and I looked at games that he's carried the ball 20 times, and I looked at the game following that game. So there have been, I think it was eight instances in which he carried the ball 20 times in the last three years. In the next game, he averages just 60 rushing yards. So I'm not expecting anything big out of Gore this week. I think Marlon Mack is going to get a lot more work in that backfield just because Gore is going to need more of a rest on his body. Uh, Kenyon Drake did go off for about 120 yards against Denver, but that was just when they lost Derek Wolf. They didn't have Pico for the game, uh, but he was the first person to surpass 77 rush. He was the first running back to go over 77 rushing yards since week six on this Broncos defense. So I don't like Gore at all this week. Uh, a couple of the running backs I don't like at all this week are the Titans running backs, the duo of Murray and Henry. It's impossible to pick which one is going to score, which one is going to get more carries. Um, you might think that San Francisco, that's their matchup. You might think that San Francisco, right? That's they're playing in San Fran week 15 that it's just like a vacuum for fantasy running backs. 
That's not the case. They've been very solid against running backs over the last month of the season, and it's very heavily due to the play of Reuben Foster, who came back in week nine. So he's been back for four or five weeks, and he is grading out as the number four overall run-stopping linebacker, really heading, spearheading that team. And running backs have not um, had their way with this defense like they did in the beginning of the year. So that combined with the fact that we just don't know what we're getting out of Tennessee play calling, right? DeMarco went back to... to uh, playing in 70% of the team's snaps last week, like I kind of talked about in last last week's episode. Um, Henry was the one who scored, right? So Mar DeMarco plays more. They both get carries. Henry scores. Someone catches. Like, you just don't know what you're getting. I don't think it's a good matchup. Uh, Mariota is also banged up a little bit. His knee injury is supposed to be super minor. He didn't miss any plays. But if he's limited at all in, like, in mo mobility or anything like that, then the defense is going to have a much easier time focusing in on the running backs rather than having to worry about Mariota kind of you know, running the read option and, and taking it out himself. So I just don't think a lot of good things line up here with the Tennessee running backs. I mean, I, I'd play them in my flex, I guess, if I'm def desperate. Um, but I just, I, I just think people should be aware that this is not exactly like a layup, a slam dunk matchup for either of these guys. And let's get some tight ends. You know, call me crazy, man. Travis Kelsey. I don't like him this week. No one's gonna, no one's gonna have the luxury of sitting him. But I just want to go on record, say, Big Dog Nation. BD Country is telling you that Kelsey is not going to have a good week. Like I said, I, I laid it out before. I don't like Alex Smith at all. With, with Hayward on Hill, I think they're going to focus in on Kelsey. Otherwise, the other 10 guys are going to cover Kelsey. Basically what you need at this point. But we look back at week three. They knew what they were doing against Kelsey. All they got to do is watch that film and make sure they do the same thing again. They held them to one yard, one catch. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Um, you can't like Tyler Crawford or Cameron Brate this week either. Another couple guys that I do not like. Brate played in only 35% of the team's snaps last week. OJ Howard has now outsnapped Cameron Brate in eight of their last nine games. He's getting more receiving work now. Um, so you, you can't start Brate right now. And uh, Croft just, it's a terrible matchup against Minnesota. You're, ba you're basically just praying on a touchdown if you, if you play him. He has 60 total receiving yards over their last five games. That's 12 yards a game. But he, he, he was finding the end zone for a while, so you were okay playing him. But I'm telling you, don't play him this week. That wraps it up, baby. Woo, that was quick. That's good shit. I can catch my train. Uh, my leagues. As I said last week, I didn't make the E-Town get down. I didn't get, I didn't, um, I missed my subscriber league by a game. Uh, I got into my college friends, uh, my, my, my college buddies league and, uh, and the fantasy jocks. Um... Uh, so it's going to be a good weekend for playoffs. It's going to be uh, it's going to get down to the wire. My team's looking pretty solid, though. I, I think I'm going to t I think I'm going to come away with a couple chips this year. Um, but that you know that's the stretch. That's down the stretch. We got we got to persevere. We got to keep going. So let me know. Um, let me know. Well, first of all, give the give the video a thumbs up. Obviously, if you enjoyed it, it was helpful and all that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know what you want me to do for next week. Cause I know it like it, it's a ton of time that I put into all the, the blog posts and the videos that I do. Um, so if you think it'd be better off, if you'd rather just ask me questions and I'll make sure to get around to all my all the questions that you guys give me. If you'd rather that, that'd be easier, then definitely let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know what you think about the shirts. If you if you want me to hop on some of those shirts, or if you want some for the playoffs, or if you want some for the off season or something like that. Um so yeah, just leave a comment down below, give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see y'all on Sunday for the live stream. Wheelchair. Oi.